Welcome to Titan Video. We're visiting with Marcia Foster, third-year head coach of the women's basketball program at Cal State Fullerton. Coach, uh, last year's record, probably not a true measure how competitive that squad really was. What, do you, what did you learn last season that you're going to apply to this year? Well, I think we learned to stay in the process um, and, and to stay competitive no matter uh, what's going on on the floor. Um, it, was a, it was a difficult year because we had, we had great kids out there. We, we were playing hard. But I think a lack of execution hurt us in a lot of games. And uh, my assistant coaches now, um, Allison Kelly and Crystal Harris, are, are holding me to uh, my commitment to execution. Um, because I like the way we play. I like the fast-paced game that we have. I, I like pushing it. But I'll, I'd also like us to take care of the ball better. And I think that hurt us in games. Um, one of the biggest lessons, though, was having a decided heart. I read that somewhere about no matter what's going on, being committed to, to what you started. And I told my kid, kids, maybe this year is more about a life lesson, a big life lesson. I said that a lot of adults don't get this, that no matter what's going on, you have to stay committed. It's easy to, to be committed when things are going your way, but, but when they're not, you know, you want to jump ship. I mean, I, as, as a, the leader of the team, you know, I had those feelings at times like, wow, this is, this is a challenging year. But every day I woke up and worked on basketball. Every night I went home and worked on basketball because I was trying to find a way to help make us better. And I think that my example and, and my, especially my seniors buying in to no matter what, we stay committed. I think the biggest, uh, one of the biggest examples I have is I walked into the gym. I, I'll never forget this. We were nine and 18. And, and I remember standing on the sideline and watching the team practice and my team was practicing like they were 18 and 9, I mean, the way they were going through drills. And I thought, I wish that the seniors that are a part of the program could be here in years to come to see what this is going to do to the program. Um, that was definitely a defining moment for me. So I don't want another year like that. I, I know no one does because it's hard. It's hard to continue to compete. But I think we learned a lot. You've got a lot of players returning in key spots, but still half of your roster is new to Division I. A mix like that, there's a learning curve, obviously, from high school to the next level. What's this team going to have to do right off the bat to be successful? They're going to have to buy into the culture that exists here, the culture of hard work and, and uh, not cutting corners. Um, because I think you know, hard work makes up for a lot of things. Because it's going to take them time to, to get used to the pace and, the, and the, the physical nature of Division I basketball. It's also going to take them time to understand all of the things that we're doing on the floor. But if they embrace right away, if they embrace working hard and, and the commitment that takes to work hard every day, uh, I think we're going to be all right in the long run. And how about chemistry or even learning the playbook? Are those big issues? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, I, I ask for kids to think on the floor. I need thinkers out there. And I, I've recruited uh, uh, re some really smart uh, student athletes. Um, and so they're, it's taking them time um, to grasp things, but that's expected because there's a lot coming at them. So, yes, yeah, understanding, you know, what our philosophy is on the floor and what we're trying to execute. Um, the chemistry, I think, because the upperclassmen work so hard and understand, again, understand the culture that's expected, that, that we've created and they've embraced. Um, when they see the young kids buy into that, that part of it, I think that um, the chemistry is, is, go is going to be created because of that. You've got a senior backcourt duo in Lauren Chow and Megan Richardson. Uh, obviously, there's uh, some scoring benefits there, but what else will having these two on the floor together do for your team? Again, I, I can't have uh, two better examples of, of uh, the culture here. And, I, and I, we talk a lot about that because it's a, it's a culture of discipline. We embrace certain ideas and values that, that we want this program to reflect um, and and we want to represent every time we step on the floor. And Lauren Chow and Megan Richardson are both leaders. Um, I know that there's a saying that you go as far as your senior leadership takes you. Well, if that's the case, we're in great hands because I have two great leaders. They lead in different ways. Megan Richardson is very, um, she's uh, more demanding. Um, 
but has embraced my request for her to teach the young ones um, and bring them along, help bring them along. Because if we're teaching, if they're teaching on the court, that makes our job so much easier. Lauren Chow, is more, she's more of a quiet leader, but uh, she'll, pull, she'll pull players aside. And, and, and she's also very, very smart on the floor. She'll pull players aside and, and, and kind of let them know what's going on. So they're both teaching our young, our young kids, and, and they're both great examples of, of hard work, of, of being disciplined by the way they take care of, of their bodies or the way they eat, how they get their rest, how they are on top of their studies. They are examples of this program. So as far as having two great kids assist in building this program, that's what Lauren Chow and Megan Richardson are. That's what else they bring besides their scoring. And let me tell you, I'm looking forward to them scoring on the floor, both of them. Megan had a big summer even considered for the United States Pan American Games team. What makes her such a special player? First of all, that was such an honor for her to be considered for a spot on the Pan American Games team. Um, Megan is special because she loves the game. And, and, and she really loves a game where she's willing to put time in that most players don't. It's, it's her work ethic. It's her, her competitiveness. Um, she gets better every year, every summer. Like the, the, the amount of time that we have to work with our student athletes on the floor, um, it seems like a lot because our season goes so long, but we don't get that individual time. Um, that not the time that I'd like to work with them to really bring them along. You have to work in the summer on your game. Megan works relentlessly on her game. Um, and that's what makes her special. Plus, she, she, she doesn't want to fail at anything. And so she's constantly pushing herself. She's such a great example. I'm glad that the freshmen that are here had the opportunity to see her or having the opportunity to see her right now in her senior year, with the last year of college, you know, what it looks like to put it on the line, because that's what they get to see every day. So she's, she doesn't just go through the motions, she's working on her game at all times? She's working on her game at all times, and she's, you know, she's embracing the little things again that we're asking her to do. I continue to, to stretch her. Um, at first, Megan, she led by example, just example. Um, now she's, she's teaching, and she's talking, and she's, you know, she's sharing her knowledge in a different way besides just just by example and I continue to ask more from her my expectations are high she's gifted I want all of it yeah, after only a couple games last year your front court took a hit when my Olivier went down with a season in the injury how much better is this team gonna be with her back in the lineup I love having Maya back um, she came back ready for her sophomore season um, last year and had improved so much offensively because Maya's always been a solid defensive player. So the first thing that I'm really happy to welcome back is her defensive presence on the floor because she's, she's the glue for the defense. She's such a smart player on the floor. Um, she kind of keeps everything together. She can defend any position, uh, point guard or the post, because she's so explosive laterally. Um, she rebounds the ball. Now we're looking again for more, you know, because that's one of the things. The player at Cal State Fullerton, you have to know that every year there's going to be another level of expectation placed upon you. And so now Maya needs to be a better score. She needs to be a scorer for us. She needs to be more of an offensive threat for us. So um, I'm happy to have her back. She's a great person. Um, she works hard every day, and it, last year was significant to, to play without her. I mean, it, it, really, it really showed, um, especially defensively, we were not um, as strong defensively as, as we needed to be. You got four other players back, Lauren Bouchong and Jasmine Grayson in the front line, and Alicia Crisp and Alex Thomas in the backcourt. How have you seen that quartet improve over the summer, and what were your expectations out of that group? Well. <clears throat> We need an inside game to be successful uh, and to be successful at the level that, that we want to be successful. We need a solid inside game. Lauren Bouchon's improvement and Jasmine Grayson's improvement over the summer have, have it's, it's outstanding. Um, Jasmine Grayson is like a different player. You know, both their size, they're both 6'2". Um, they both can score inside. 
And so, and this is expected. Again, we go back to the expectations. It's expected that they get better, that they work on their game. But both of them have committed to the process of, of getting better. And so um, I'm looking forward to to um, the inside scoring because we have the outside. We get the inside. We, we could be hard to stop. Alicia Crisp and Alex Thomas are both physical, de defensively disruptive guards. And both of them have the ability to get to the basket and uh, absorb the contact and finish. And, and what's, what's improved with, with both of them is their outside shots. Um, they worked on those this summer. So um, the Tanat, again, that group, and there's a lot of expectation placed upon the, the sophomores. I treat the sophomores like they've been here. Jasmine Grace and Alex Thomas, you've been here, so you know what I expect as far as how hard you work. Again, I think hard work, you know, along with the instruction that they get from us, hard work will, will take this, will take us places, the places that we want to go. Um, okay, newcomers, you got a freshman class, seven women, going to be huge key to your success, obviously. Talk a little bit about the group as a whole and what kind of skills they bring to your lineup. Well, there's, there's everything with the freshman class. I told them when they first came here, um, when they were together as a group, I told them that we will be as successful as a program as they are, as they catch on. We will get, that we, we can be very good if they get good. And I know they're freshmen, but some aren't going to have the opportunity to be freshmen. The expectations, again, are high. Um, Shantae Miles uh, backing up Lauren Chow right now at the at the point guard. Taylor Butler is a tough player. Chelsea Austin. Um, we've added length. We've added rebounding. Kat Awua, very, very tough player. Natalie Williams. So we've added size. We've added athleticism. Um, we've added rebounders. We've added scoring. Um, Haley King and Jessica Palmer will both uh, red shirt most likely um, because of various uh, injuries. So um, we expect the five to contribute. Okay, the schedule, uh, non-conference schedule, you like it, and then Big West, you don't have any choice. You got to play home and home. Yeah. What's it look like in the Big West this year? The Big West is going to be tough. I mean, I'm, I think a lot of there are schools that have lost players. Um, and, and there are schools that who, who have who've gained a lot. So I just need to see what everybody has. I never doubt that people are working as hard as I am to build a program and are bringing in talented kids. And so, um, you know, just like the defending champion, uh, Cal Poly, I mean, I, they, you know, uh, the former MVP is back for them, of the league is back for them. And, and Davis, although they lost a couple, they have a significant number of their their lineup back. So, um, you know, who knows? And, and people always have something up their sleeve. I know John Margarita's over at Riverside has lost a lot, but he always has something going on over there. And Northridge has, has loaded up. You know, and Santa Barbara, I mean, everyone, you know, Irvine is, Irvine's going to be tough again. They have a lot of returners on their team. Long Beach State has added the athleticism and, and ball players over there. So everybody's going to be tough. Pacific has new JC kids and that are going to help their lineup. So, you know, all I really, all I'm really concerned about is what we do and how we come to play every single time we step on the floor. Um, and if, if we embrace that, it doesn't matter who we play. We're coming to compete and, and, and to be successful. Final question, a little bit off the wall, but if you were the uh, ruler, queen of women's basketball, what three things would you do to change rules or anything about the sport? Well, the first thing I would change is uh, the amount of uh, physicality, the, f the physical nature of the game. I would allow more contact. I mean, the game has come a long way since, you know, when I played and, you know, everything was a foul. But uh, I'd like to see um, the women be able to compete and, and be more physical without um, those types of plays being taken away. Um, <clears throat> also, the 10 second line, I think that that would be to our advantage to have a, a 10 second backward um, violation in effect because we like to press. And um, I wouldn't worry about it offensively because I have ball handlers uh, that can, can handle pressure situations. So I'd like to see that. Um, also, as the game continues to grow 
and flourish. Um, you look at where the WNBA is now, and you look at how uh, women's basketball, young girls are so much better and women are so much better. As we progress, I like to see revenue sharing as we move through the tournament, as, as intended, attendance continues to increase. I think that would be nice if, if we knew that we won the Big West Championship that, and went to the tournament and we're in the first round that our school and our conference, we're going to be compensated for that. I think There's that would be outstanding. Out there for you. Yeah, I think that would be nice for women's basketball. So I think that's down the line. I think that will come at some point. But those are the changes that I'd like to see. We'll see what, what you can do about that. Coach yeah, Foster, thanks for your time. Good luck this season. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you.